Faith Talk TV. We're on the scene today at Java Hut Oconomowoc. Yes, our favorite coffee shop. And now we have one of our favorite uh, authors and uh, ministry men here, Daniel Fazzino. Yeah. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Welcome. Daniel's come all the way from New York to join us here at Faith Talk. And also, I understand you're um, best friends with Bruce Venata, who's another friend of Kim and mine as well. So. Yeah, yeah, amazing guy. Isn't he? Powerful testimony. Very powerful, powerful testimony. But you, too, have a powerful testimony. So God has done some amazing things through you and accomplished a lot for, for His glory. Mm -hmm. That's our tagline here at Faith Talk TV. So couldn't have asked for a more perfect guest. Right, right. right. So tell us a little bit, uh, Daniel, about yourself and how God has worked through you in amazing ways. Uh, sure, yeah. I was uh, born and raised in Long Island, New York, and uh, grew up in a Lutheran church, going to Lutheran church pretty regularly. Uh -huh. My parents brought me there, and I, I kind of always believed in God as a child, you know, to pray the Our Father, and now I lay me down to sleep. Mm -hmm. And um, But when I was a teenager, I started developing a fear of death and hell, and it kind of uh, kept me awake at night even sometimes. Um, yeah, and my brother had gone away to California. Uh, he came back about a year later, and he was just very different. He was always talking about Jesus, carrying his Bible. He had this light and peace about him. So I asked him what was going on, you know, and he explained to me that he'd become born again. And I didn't know what that meant. But he asked me point blank one day, he said, Daniel, if you were to die today, are you sure you'd go to heaven? And I was like, well, no, not really. I'm kind of struggling with that. So he led me in a sinner's prayer, and I asked Jesus into my life. And from that point on, I really started um, feeling that God was real and personal. He started answering prayers. Mm -hmm. uh, and then what really took my faith ahead was two miracles that happened to me concerning healing. Um, the first one was um, I had chronic back pain from a uh, torn cartilage ring, okay. a bulging disc. Uh, developed when I was 16 years old. Chiropractic uh, help wasn't, you know, wasn't helping, actually. Physical therapy didn't help. So I was in pain every day, whether I sti you know, stood or sat, you know, in varying degrees. Um, and finally I stopped all therapy because I thought I'd just have to live with the pain the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And I went on a men's retreat in 2001. Uh, we were all in Montauk Manor, uh, Montauk Point, eastern end of Long Island. And there was about 40 guys in this hotel meeting room and they said, we're going to pray to Jesus for physical healing today. So if you have any issues, come to the front of the room, we'll pray for you. And I was online to go to the front, and my friend Dave was next to me online. He said, Daniel, what are you going to ask for prayer for? I said, uh -huh. my back, because I've had this problem all these years. And Kim, Phyllis, right when I said that, the pain disappeared. Gone. I didn't yeah. even get to the front of the room yet. God's Holy Spirit was there, and I was bending and twisting. It was gone. I've been okay since. Uh, it was 2001. Which I think that's a, a, a really incredible and important testimony yeah. that you share and that's what I love so much about all of the miracles that you write about in your book mm -hmm. is it's always about giving the glory to the God to God yes it's not about the individual who's laying the hands on or or the, like the, yeah, the say, miracle you know, right the person right. It, it is about God and his Holy Spirit and the power of that working through the individual and the faith of that individual that facilitates the miracle it's all about God Yes, because yeah. at that point, no one touched me. No right. one prayed for me. Yes. It was just God's spirit, yes. the presence, you know, and um, I knew it was God. Yeah. And I, it wasn't the doctors, it wasn't chiropractic, it wasn't a man. Sure. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, that was so personal for me yes. that I knew it was God. And um, so that was the first thing. And, you know, and then a year later, in 2002, I started developing... Um, strange sensations in my chest and then pain that radiated down my arm and I thought I was having like heart trouble you know, maybe a heart attack or something and I was 27 years old at the time so it was really bizarre sure uh, I went to get that checked out um, EKG readings came back slightly off they sent me to the ER many scans uh, x-rays came back negative finally they took a CAT scan and the doctor came in uh, and he said we found something and it's a rather large mass in your chest mm. so I'm thinking you know, how large is large? And I right, asked him, right. and he said, it's grapefruit-sized. And I was thinking, well, it's my favorite fruit, but I certainly don't want it in <laughs> yeah, my right, chest. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, so um, he told me to get it evaluated, which I did, and it came back as lymphatic cancer, lymphoma. It was inoperable. Uh, they said, we'll give you treatment, but we're not sure if it's going to respond. If it doesn't, you'll be dead within three weeks to three months, three months at the most. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, what do you do when you get a 
diagnosis like that. You know, yes. it, was, it was shocking. Um, but long story short, I had many different types of treatments. I had six rounds of chemo, and uh, I had intravenous vitamins and minerals. I had laetrile, chiropractic, acupuncture, massage. Every, everything you name it. known to. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and you know, the, one of the amazing things was that six months prior to this diagnosis. I started an exhaustive search and study on the cancer industry and the drug industry just because I thought it was fascinating. Mm -hmm. I had no idea anything was wrong, but I felt like God was preparing me in some way. You know, just I was doing all this research. Mm -hmm. And then lo and behold, I get this diagnosis. So um, they were going to take a, uh, a scan halfway through the treatment. So I was getting chemo once a month uh -huh. for, for six months. And at the three month mark, they took a scan hoping that the tumor would be smaller. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. show us, and the other thing too, all of the miracles that you speak of are documented, scientifically proven, so there's no doubt here at all. You can see the scans here, um, there's a, uh, this is all the same day, just different angles, oh and you can see the chest cavity, there's two black spots, mm -hmm. the top one is the tumor, this, the bottom one is my heart, it actually got as big as my heart at wow. one point, um, and I, I was... You know, there's a point I was just totally a broken man lying in my hospital bed. And I said, God, you know, I know I'm your child. If you want to take me, I'll go with you. Yes. Because the Bible says that to be absent from the body is to be present, present with, the, with Lord. the Lord. And I believe that. Right. Yes. Sure. I said, Lord, if you want to heal me and, and let me live, I'll just do my best to share with the world. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll just do my best to continue to serve you mm -hmm. and share with the world your goodness and your grace and your love and your mercy. Be obedient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, at that point, what else could I do? It was right. really out of my hands. Um, so at the three-month mark, they took another scan, and again, they were just hoping that it would be smaller. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, it came back completely negative. There's only one black spot in my... And that's your heart. That's my heart, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the doctors were... I mean, my, my oncologist was pleasantly surprised. Uh -huh. yeah. He was reserved, yes. but he yes. said, you know, you definitely came through it faster than most with less side effects than sure. most. Mm -hmm. The nurses were like, you know, we don't see this that often. This sure. is amazing. It, it's a miracle. Yeah. yeah. It's a miracle. Yeah. So that's, that's an incredible story. Thank you. Yeah. And so as a result of the miracle that you experienced, had you already been led to uh, research and find others who had experienced the miracle? What, what was the... The order of that, yeah. 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 Um, when I came back to work, uh, I was working at a TV station. I'd been out for months, and when I came back and I shared the story of what I went through, mm -hmm. there's a lot more to it. Sure. Um, long story, a lot of miracles that happened and the way that God orchestrated things and took care of me. But uh, I started sharing the story, and a lot of my coworkers were just incredulous uh, mm -hmm. about what I went through. And I said, well, if you think that what I went through is amazing, you should hear about my friends' stories. Because mm -hmm. I've been a Christian a long time, and I, I know a lot of people who have experienced some amazing things. And this is the normal Christian life, or it should be. It should be, yes. You know, God is intervening in people's lives. Mm -hmm. And I live in an area that's, you know, it's not the Bible Belt. There's a lot of skepticism. Sure. Um, a lot of my friends are atheists, agnostics, pagans, Wiccans, you know. Yes. And they just don't know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. They just don't know the, the power of God. Yeah. So I would share the stories, and they would be amazed. And they said, wow, you know, you should really kind of put these in a, in a documentary film or a book or something. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. I started sure. interviewing my friends and, and family members, coworkers, church members right. who had miracles, and they would share their stories. So. Um, I'm, I'm so thrilled that the Holy Spirit led us in this direction because it's so important for the people listening to, to grasp that. Yeah. One of our former guests uh, on Faith Talk TV, Steve Keel, yeah. struggles oh, yes. with cancer and he passed away this spring. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, just watching what God did in their family and supporting him and our pastor who would go to visit him would say, I went there with like a devotional and when I got there I just was like, throw out the devotional because that mm -hmm. gentleman blessed me more than I blessed him. Right. And how he, he said, this, here this man was in the hospital for almost two years before he died and was home very infrequently for mm. small bouts mm -hmm. and uh, went through bone marrow transplants and everything. But he always kept saying, I'm a blessed man. And he was just so, you know, probably took on a different phase of his life and realizing what God had given him. As yes, his God ministered to many through him and mm -hmm. through his illness. So, and so again, it's... Right, it's not always the answer we want, and uh, we all walk through troubled times from one time to another. It's yes. a constant journey. Uh, uh, our good friend Richard just said, um, 
this is not a destination, it's a journey till we... Right. Right. And you know, I realized, looking back, because people ask me, how come you got sick? Why did this happen to you? You know, I'd never smoked or drank or abused my body, really, and, you know, people would ask me, well, why did God give this to you? And I was like, I don't know why God gave it to me, or if he did. Mm -hmm. But I know he used it for good. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for the good mm -hmm. of those who love the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the scriptures that I really held on to. Yes. And looking back, I realized that it really wasn't about me at all. But it really blessed so many people around me, like my family and my friends mm -hmm. who witnessed what I went through. And, uh, you know, many relationships were strengthened. You know, mm -hmm. priorities were Re reassessed. Right. Let's put it that way. Yes, right. When you when you can live like you're dying, it's it's uh, it's amazing. It really is. You know, it makes you really appreciate things. And God did a work in me, a huge work. To, he broke me of my pride and my mm -hmm. independent spirit, and just you know, I was like, you know, God, mm. <laughs> I'm broken, and yeah. brokenness is not necessarily a bad place to it's, be. It's the best place to be because at that point, you know, you're looking up and your focus is yeah. always on, on the Lord. And, and, and the other thing, too, is that look at the what he produced through this, yes. these yes. books. We have the first edition, right? Yep. And then mm -hmm. a second, and I heard a there's a third, third in the works. There is the a works. third in the works. So yes. we have to get those, and these are available where? Uh, you can get them from Amazon.com, anywhere books are available. Okay. Uh, also, my website, divineinterventionradio.com. Okay. And, so, and you stream live, I understand, right, your radio well, we, program? I, I do have a radio show uh -huh. uh, because... It's kind of a story, but after I was healed and I started compiling this book, uh, a Christian radio station opened up near my house. Wonderful. My wife and I went down and she encouraged me to pitch the idea to do a radio show based on divine intervention. Nice. Because I've been working on the book for several years. Yeah. So we pitched the idea and uh, the pastor loved it and said, I'll give you a 13 week contract. I had to buy airtime too, which I didn't have the money for. So it was a real step of faith. Mm -hmm. It was like yes. 500 bucks a month or something. Yes. Um, but anyway. Mm -hmm. We did about three or four episodes, and he said, I love what you're doing. You don't have to pay me anymore. Just keep doing it. Oh, um, what a blessing. So, yeah, we did That's a total blessing. Divine Intervention Great. Radio de debuted in April of, um, or May of 07, mm -hmm. or April of 07. The book came out in May, and since then, the, the show got picked up in a few states. It's in three states right now. Wonderful. And about five or six stations. I think it's really interesting, too. A, a scripture that came to me yesterday was Joshua 1.9, which I believe says, you know, don't be discouraged. You know, God uses all things, just like you said with Romans 8, 28, and um, it's just amazing how God weaves the tapestry and how he brings people across our paths and connects us for, yes. just like he, as he did years ago with the Billy Graham group, right. look what he's doing. Right. So it's really exciting to see like what's God going to do connecting us um, out in your your area. So it'll be yeah. great to come and visit you the yes, next please trip. Do. That yeah, be that'd wonderful. be awesome. Get to meet your wife. and. Yeah. You have a dog, right? Uh, we had a dog. Oh, I'm sorry. We had to give her up when we moved. Yeah, we oh. couldn't find an apartment yeah, complex apartment. that would allow oh. dogs. So. Oh. Sorry, it was like the hardest thing I ever had to do. Oh, I know. Oh, I can't, they're, well, they're like, a, they're like a child. I know. Yeah, yeah. I know I have a good book for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, right. right. But except the book yeah. is better for when you have a dog that you didn't give away. Yes, exactly. Season. But anyway, it's long well, story short. Thank you so much yeah. for joining us oh, at Faith pleasure. Talk and for sharing your amazing story thank with our viewers. Thank We're thank really, you. Yeah. really blessed to now add you to um, I pray a list of, of friends in the Lord. Great. Well, it was, it's been a real joy to interview Daniel today, and Faith Talk TV is now signing off. That's real right. life. Real stories. Real people. Real faith. Faith Talk TV, where God gets all the glory. <laughs>